Focus on eternity. There is one thing that God doesn't want us to do, and that is to live like this earth is our home, because it is not. We are here only for a moment. The life that we have here is very momentary, short-lived, just a place to pass by. Psalm 103, 15 and 16 tells us that the life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and is gone, and its place remembers it no more. The world is only a resting place on a long journey. It is only the beginning of an experience that will last forever, and what we have here right now is the chance to choose how we want that experience to be like. After this, we have eternity ahead of us. The 70 or 90 or whatever number of years that God blesses us with are only a tip of the iceberg in comparison to what we have ahead of us. It is like a drop of water in the ocean. There is an everlasting phase after life here on earth. Just imagine something that exists forever and ever. It has no end. That is what lies ahead of you and I. And while you're on this earth, God's wish for you is to focus on that eternity. Where will you go when your mortal self has died and there's no more you on this earth? Where will your soul go? Will you spend an eternity rejoicing in heaven with our Creator? Or will you be tormented forever in hell? You have no business living like this is your permanent home. As a child of the Almighty, always and forever be aware that ahead of you lies the most critical part of your life. It is not the time you spend here on earth that will determine how well you'll live in eternity, but rather what you do with the time that you got. When you wake up, as you undertake your activities for the day, as you retire to bed at night, do you have your life after life in mind? Or are you just living in the moment? Do you have the long term in mind? Or do you live each day as if there is no tomorrow? Most people tend to waste their time in this world chasing temporary happiness. Money, wealth, fame, power, recognition, and all that. They waste their lives seeking earthly glory. All these feed to the mortal part of us. They ratify the flesh and its desires. They give satisfaction to the desires of our flesh and feed nothing to the spirit. The preacher in Ecclesiastes calls this vanity, a chasing after the wind. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Ecclesiastes 1, 2. Actually, the entire book of Ecclesiastes is a lamentation of how all things we do in pursuit of earthly happiness and comfort are all in vain. They make no difference in what happens after. However, they all have a common ending, which he ends his book with, for God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. The life of man on earth is very temporary, and so is all that he materially gains while here. Beyond that is the eternity, which only has two ways, heaven or hell, eternal life or destruction. The preacher says that God will bring every deed to judgment. This only means that judgment will lead each and every one of us to either of the two places. There will be no in-between. The days spent here on earth are numbered, and we should never forget that we're headed somewhere more important. Wherever we put our focus and energy is where we are likely to end up in. When you live your life like earth is your permanent place, you're bound to hold important only the things that are held in high esteem on earth. When you make it your permanent home, the only things that you'll care about are the things of the world. When all your treasures are here on earth, then your body, mind, and soul will be tied to the things of this world. Yet God has told us that this world is not our home, that here we are like the wind, only passing by. Our lives are like grass that is out there in the fields today and tomorrow, it's no more. It is very tragic, as a believer, to make this world your permanent dwelling. Everything that you do for the time you're on earth will count either positively or negatively as to how and where you spend your eternity. And by everything, I mean literally everything. Whatever you do, think, say, how you act, all will have a say in your end days. If you believe in eternity, if you hope to spend eternity with Christ forever, then your life must match exactly that. Every word that you say, every deed that you do, every thought that crosses your mind, 
all must be leading to eternity. This moment that you're alive now is called the sowing season. You will reap what you sow. If you sow for eternity now, you will reap eternity. But if you sow for the earthly glories, then your harvest will be the temporary satisfaction of earthly possessions. God cannot be fooled. He has given each and every one of us the time and opportunity to choose where he wants to be. He is very fair and just, giving us the knowledge on what lies beyond this world through his word and then letting us choose. He is not going to impose his choice or wish on you. He is not going to impose his choice or wish on you. You have the sole responsibility of choosing your place while you're on earth, uninfluenced, pure, and true to yourself, how you want things to be. You are the sole decision maker. Examine yourself. What are you sowing today? Are they seeds that have the potential to bear eternal life with our maker? Or are they seeds that only bring forth worldly pleasures and nothing more? In what direction is your life headed? Do you live your talk? Do your actions manifest what you believe in? Or are they hypocritical statements made to hide the real you? Hebrews 13, 14. For here we do not have an enduring city, but we are looking for the city that is to come. What is this city that the author of Hebrews is talking about? Is it the same place that Jesus Christ was telling his disciples in John 14, 3? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me. Our focus should be on eternity, on the city that is to come, on the home that he has gone ahead to prepare for us, the life after death. In Colossians 3, 2, the Bible tells us how we can set our focus on the things above. It says from verse 1 through 4, Therefore, since you have been raised with Christ, strive for the things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things, for you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. As a believer, your focus should be on heaven, God, Christ, eternal life. The indulgence of the flesh should not distract you from pursuing a place in the royal family of God. Whether it is temptations to sin or the struggles of life that are trying to bring you down, you should always know that that is only for a moment. It cannot last forever. But the victory that you win in Christ for life everlasting is an eternal win. This is the joy of being a believer and truly pursuing the things of Christ. That for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. That whatever happens, it is to your advantage. For you to be alive today is by the hand of God and to die for him is even greater gain. Christ said that whoever saves his life loses it, but whoever lays down his life for the sake of him, Jesus Christ, gains it. Matthew 16, 25. Focusing on eternity means staying blinded to the things of the world, putting up deaf ears to the misleading voices in this world, refusing to fall into temptation, rising up even in the face of challenges because ahead of you lies a very big crown of victory. It is this kind of unwavering, heavenly focus that Paul has in Philippians 3, 13 through 14, when he says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Paul is aware that he is on a journey, that his current place is not where he is meant to be permanently. He is in transit to somewhere of greater glory. Notice how he is so deliberate and conscious about the pressing on. It means doing everything that it takes for him to reach that mark that he wants to. And not just once, each and every day, and willingly so. The walk to an eternity in heaven is not an event, but rather a journey. Like a journey is made of many steps, attaining eternity with Christ is the result of the conscious and willful taking of progressive steps towards him. It doesn't happen overnight, but comes from a lifetime of true living in him, living to his word and pursuing Christ likeness in everything that you do. While having an eternity perspective on earth might not be simple, it is totally possible. If Christ did it, then you too can. If you can put to death things such as sexual immorality, 
impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, idolatry, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips, Colossians 3, 5 through 8, and refuse to be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Romans 12, 2. And his will for you is that you will walk with him faithfully in this life, so that in the next life you will be forever with him in his glories. Be not deceived by the temporary contentment, comfort, and satisfaction that worldly pleasures give. Do not feel discouraged due to the pains of this life. Instead, let your focus be on eternity. Set your eyes on Christ and Christ alone. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. Hebrew 12, 1-2